On some of my D&D videos that are more aimed at helping new players get into the hobby, one of my most frequent comments goes something like this. Looks like fun. If only I had friends to play with. Or, I really want to play D&D, but I can't find a group. Today, I will address this problem, and for those of you who are struggling with it, hopefully send you on your way to your first game of D&D. Hi everybody, my name is Nate, and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. In this video, I address the very common problem of wanting to play D&D, but not having a group of people to start playing with. If only friends came in the box. Joking aside, I have seen people in the past be somewhat dismissive of this problem and just tell people to go out and make some friends or get off your computer, be more social. But believe me when I say I understand that actually for a lot of you it's really hard. I know for some of you, you might have friends, but they're just not interested in D&D. And for others, I get that actually making friends or maintaining friendships is really challenging. Depression, anxiety, and other barriers to making friends are all too common. In fact, I've read several articles from major news outlets in the last year citing the loneliness epidemic as perhaps one of America's greatest public health concerns. I think this is also one of the reasons that tabletop RPGs like Dungeons & Dragons are so valuable today. They connect people, they're inherently social, and they gather us around one of humanity's oldest communal traditions, storytelling. So I just wanted to make a note of this before I get into the tips and resources that I understand it's a real struggle for some of you who want to get into D&D. And I think a lot of the trite, easy answers I've heard in the past belittle the struggle that it can be for some of you. So real talk here, even with some of the tips and resources I share here, it can take a lot of work to get a game of D&D going with a group. It's gonna take some effort. And for those of us who have played these games for years, we can tell you that it's a struggle to maintain a regular game group. Still, I hope you find some of the things I share here do make it a bit easier. First, we're gonna cover ways to find physical face-to-face -face game groups. Then we'll talk about some ways you might find an online game group. And lastly, even though it isn't always ideal, ways you can play a tabletop RPG adventure all by yourself. Solo play, which I actually hear a lot of people really enjoy. So first, physical face-to-face -face groups. One of the most obvious places to start is with your friends and family. If you're new to the hobby, I recommend buying one of these starter-friendly sets, like the D&D starter set, or Numenera, or Star Wars Edge of the Empire. And of course the Pathfinder Beginner Box, which is a great product, but I don't recommend buying it because they're coming out with a new edition in about two months. Get the set, they're pretty cheap, and read the books and try to learn how it all works. The reality is it's gonna be a lot easier for you to get into this hobby if you are willing to be the GM. In doing so, you could be the one to possibly introduce a whole new group of players to this amazing hobby, which is really cool. Now, some of you might be saying, my friends and family just aren't into that, Nate. Trust me, they never want to play. That absolutely might be true, but I'll challenge you with this. Have you actually asked? Invite them. They might surprise you. Ask your friends, your siblings, your parents, your kids, your classmates. Try it. Another thing I forgot to mention when filming is that you really don't need like a full table of players, one game master and three or four players. You can just have one game master and one player in addition to the solo play we'll talk about toward the end. In fact, the makers of D&D, Wizards of the Coast, recently announced their D&D Essentials Kit, which will be available at Target on June 24 and everywhere September 3. And this actually has an adventure in the box that can be played with just one DM and one player. Now, obviously you don't need this kit in order to make that happen. People have been running their own adventures for very small groups for decades, but it is great that they're recognizing that it can be hard to find a full group to play and they are including some beginner friendly tools to help people get started with less. So I'm excited to check it out, but anyway, don't think that you need a full table of four or five players in order to get started. Now, perhaps some of you are a bit hesitant to start, in playing the role of the dungeon master or game master. I get that. I certainly didn't want to DM when I first started either. So if you're new and you want to try the game as a player first, here are some thoughts, some ways that you can find groups of strangers to start playing with. This is also the next step if you really did ask your friends and family and you got shot down. 
First, check your local brick and mortar shops, game shops, comic shops. There are often groups that play in these places, just call them up and ask. In addition, they sometimes have bulletin boards with posts about groups looking for players. You might find a note there, or maybe you leave your own note there and wait for someone to respond. If there are no game shops in your area, try bookstores. Even big retailers like Barnes & Noble often host games. And for that matter, libraries. These are vibrant centers of community. And remember that whole friendship and loneliness thing we were talking about? Libraries have so many resources to get you connected to your community, free events and activities for kids and adults. They're amazing centers of learning and community, and I'm just a huge fan of libraries. So check them out for RPGs, ask a librarian, or see if they have a community bulletin board. Also, side note, you might be surprised how many libraries actually have RPG books that you can check out. Next, you could also try organized play. I'm talking about D&D Adventurers League or Pathfinder Society. These are kind of the official branded methods of play. A Pathfinder Society game was actually my first RPG experience ever at a local game shop. And while organized play is a bit more linear and perhaps a bit restrictive or gamey in the eyes of some, I'm really glad it exists to promote this hobby in a very visible way. And there are some really great GMs and groups out there doing organized play. I'll put links down in the description for Pathfinder Society and Adventurers League websites so you can actually go in there, put in your zip code, and see if there are any games going on in your area. And speaking of organized play, there's usually a whole lot of organized play going on at gaming conventions. Now, these can be a bit schedule dependent. You might not want to wait eight months or whatever till the next local convention starts, or you may not want to travel and go three hours to another town if you don't have one in your own town. Still, I definitely recommend looking into it. Go ask your local game shops if they know of any, and in my opinion, they can be really worthwhile even if you do have to drive a few hours because you're going there for a full weekend of gaming. Next, the internet is full of ways that people are connecting for face-to-face -face games. Meetup.com is how I found my first RPG experiences, but there are tons of Facebook groups, Discord servers, and various Looking for Group, or LFG sites, all over the internet. There's an LFG subreddit that's pretty popular, and I even recently heard of a new web app called Crawler, which is for gamers trying to link up in local areas. This app and a lot of these other sites also have options for dun 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 online play. So that's the next thing we'll talk about. Some of you might not like the idea of online play. You want to play face to face. But for some of you, you might not really have many other options. Perhaps that's because you live in a really remote area or perhaps your work schedule makes it tough because you work evenings and weekends. These days, online play is a great option. There are tons of tools for this now. You've got Skype, Zoom, Discord, and a host of virtual tabletops that also make it really easy. When I was fairly new, I got an invite from a guy to play over Google Hangouts, and it was super convenient for me as a dad with young kids because I could put my kids to bed and sit at the computer playing D&D late into the night. This group actually turned into some of my best friends, and we still play online, and we get together once a year to hang out in person. That's another advantage of online gaming. You have a huge pool of players and are much more likely to find a group that fits your style or game of choice. In this case, I'm talking about my friends from the Provokers campaign. And by the way, their Facebook group, Absolute Tabletop, is a great place to hang out, and I frequently see new players welcomed and finding online games there. I'll put a link down below. Another great resource for finding online games are some of the popular virtual tabletops. Mainly I'm talking about Fantasy Grounds and Roll20, although there are others as well. Because their business relies on people playing RPGs online, they also have very active forums that can be great places to find a gaming group. As a side bonus, these virtual tabletops make for a really smooth RPG experience with integrated character sheets, maps, and minis, etc. One other online game finder that's a bit different from the rest is Rollgate. This one is a play-by-chat tool. It's all text-based. But unlike other text-based ways of playing, this one was built from the ground up with RPGs in mind. So it has a lot of great tools for these games, and it's actually mobile-friendly too. 
I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that you could probably literally jump into a game now and start playing within an hour or two on Rollgate. It's amazing, it's so easy, and if you have a bit of social anxiety, it can be a much less intimidating way to play also. It really eliminates one of the biggest barriers to games happening, the schedule because you can check in when you have time playing asynchronously. Now this also does make the game move pretty slow in general, but you can actually set your preferred pace and use that as a factor when searching for games. All right, so these are some resources for finding people to game with, but I do think it's also worth mentioning the solo play option we mentioned. Again, some people really enjoy this. This might warrant an entirely separate video at some point, but honestly, I've never actually done it myself. I did a fair amount of research and I know of a couple games that do make it fairly easy. First, I want to mention Iron Sworn. This is an independently published RPG with a solo play mode that gets rave reviews. And it's also a free PDF on drive-thru RPGs, so that's pretty cool. There's also a solo dungeon crawl game called D100 Dungeon I've thought about checking out. I think this one's like $13 or something for the PDF, but I hear pretty good things. It gets good reviews. Lastly, there are some D&D 5e solo adventures out there, and I even found one that teaches you the basic rules of the game through the adventure. I'll link that one down below. But you can probably find solo adventures out there for a lot of other RPG systems as well. For me, I have to admit these have never been really all that attractive, but if I had more free time, I'd probably be more likely to check them out. I would love to hear from you as well. What sorts of resources or tips did I miss out on here and what would you recommend? And if you're someone who has struggled with this, what do you think has been the main barrier to making friends or finding a group for you? Lastly, before we go, I wanna give a huge thank you to my patrons. Patrons are people who support this channel on a monthly basis. And if you want to join with them in support, there's also some pretty cool rewards. So go to patreon.com slash WASD20 and check those out. Thank you very much, patrons. For those of you waiting for the next installment of the mapping videos, don't worry, it's coming in less than a week. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like and make sure you are subscribed so you can keep seeing more. Thank you so much for watching and everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon. Bye.